thank you for the introduction. So I'm from Federal University of Ouro Preto, but most of those works were developed in Federal University of Minas Gerais. Uh, I'll be talking about today molecular decoration of two-dimensional materials, uh, a show a class of molecules that can self-assemble on a variety of substrates. So this is the summary of this presentation here. I'll first talk a little bit about 2D materials and phosphonic acid self-assembled layers. Then I'll show our results for four systems, OPA plus graphene, hexagonal boron nitride, uh, MOS2, molybdenum disulfide, and talk, and finally our conclusion. Uh, so, for 2D materials, we now have them in a variety of compositions and properties. We, it all started with graphene, which is a semi metal with zero band gap and a single layer of carbon atom. We have also molybdenum disulfide. On the other hand, the atoms are not all in the same plane here, and it's a semiconductor with a direct band gap. And a final example would be hexagonal boron nitride, which is an insulator. Uh, and it all attracts a lot of attention in the last decade or so. Uh, and we have this class of organic molecules called phosphonic acid. They are amphiphilic molecules with a polar phosphonic head group and a linear alkyl chain. I'll be focusing today on our results with octadecyl phosphonic acid which has 18 carbons in the alkyl chain, but we tested different molecules from this family. Our sample preparation is pretty straightforward. Uh, you'll be saying with this self-assembled population vertically standing on the substrate, which use hydrophilic substrate. And we also have horizontal layers such as this lying flat on the substrate for certain hydrophobic substrates such as graphite. Um, so we study this work OPA, that's organic molecule, on top of four different 2D materials, graphene, hexagonal boron nitride, molybdenum disulfide, and salt. The said is quite simple. We use as a substrate either bulk of the material or samples produced by mechanical exfoliation with this cut tape method. And for uh, molecular decoration, we use spread coating or skin coating. And we characterized our samples with Raman spectroscopy and scanning probe microscopy, and we also perform ab initio calculations. So for the first system, let's start with OPA and graphene. This first image here is the structure formed by the molecule on top of graphite, HOPG. So we see under standard AFM conditions, uh, ripple domains form. They are periodic with a five nanometer period between the, those stripes here. And the domains form between each other 60 degrees angles. So the directions of these black arrows compared to that one. Uh, so this is the fast Fourier transform of that image where we can see clearly the periodic structures and the angle between them. And five nanometer is exactly twice the length of the OPA molecule. For single layer graphene, we have here a topography image and here a phase contrast image. Those sample, that sample was mechanically exfoliated on top of silicon oxide. So the flake has a, it's on top of a corrugated substrate. We see the ups and downs of the oxide layer. And the ripple domain of the OPA, the OPA is here as well. We can see it clearly on the phase image, although it's not as, as eye-catching as in the HOPG. But the fast Fourier transform here shows the periodicity. Here we have one domain oriented in a single direction. Uh, more details about this work can be found in this ACS nano paper. Uh, we performed ab initio calculations to try to understand better our system. We considered a lot of geometries for the molecule and the substrate, 
And this one is the most stable one we found. The neighbor molecules form hydrogen bonds between the head group and their outer chain lies parallel to the substrate in graphene zigzag direction. Um, we also predicted by our ab initio calculations charge transfers, electro goes from the graphene to the OPA molecules, leaving uh, graphene with a 5.3 times 10 to the 13 per square centimeter p-type doping. So we attribute the corrugation we see in the AFM image to the head group of the neighbor molecules. So the head group form those lines. And each of these stripes here is a line of head groups of the OPA molecule. As we can see from our calculation, since the alkyl chain is in the zigzag direction, these lines of the head groups are in the armchair direction. And that's why the, the period is twice the molecule length. So we can use this system to undercover the crystallographic orientation of graphene without the need for atomic resolution. And finally, we perform Raman spectroscopy on the single layer sample. Before deposition, we had a single layer uh, uh, graphene with no defect. And after deposition, we still see no defect. There is no chemical bond between the molecule and the graphene. But we see changes in the G and 2D band that agree with our te uh, theoretical calculations because they indicate the doping of graphene with the charge density we predicted. So we can use the molecule to control the Fermi level of graphene. For hexagonal boronitride, here I have an AFM image of the OPA deposit on top of multi-layer BN. Uh, we see the corrugation, the domain, and the exfoliation form shows the 60 degree symmetry and the 5 nanometer periodicity. Uh, our Admission calculations of similar results. So the head groups that form those corrugation lines are in the armchair direction. We use this system to help clarify the formation of wrinkles in the end and more details in this paper. For MOS2, we have a So we also form uh, the domain, but we see. Uh, the 60 degree angles, but also those 12 degree angles that are shown here in this insert in the fast for year transform. Uh, and our initial calculation predicts the head groups to be aligned in our shared direction. We collected hundreds of measurements of domain angles, and we see that we have concentrated values around 0, 60, and 120. Uh, but we also have plus and minus 12 degrees. So we concluded that our uh, MOS2 is a multi crystal sample, which has grain boundaries, and we can use uh, decoration to unveil these grain boundaries without atomic resolution images, and on a larger scale that would be possible if we needed the atomic resolution images. And these 12 degrees and other degrees we found, like 80 and 20, are compatible with Stonewallers type of defects. So this is a multi-crystalline MOS2 sample. More details can be found here. And finally, we tried OPA on talc. Talc is a phyllosilicate, very abundant in the state where we work. Uh, it's, uh, it's formed by silicon, oxygen, and magnesium. We have the silica layers on the outside, as demonstrated by Ellen Karin collaborators and the magnesium atoms in the inside of the silica layers. This can be exfoliated down to a single layer like this one. And it has hexagonal symmetry on the surface, but also has oxygen atoms, so the phosphonic acid can form a hydrogen bond. So we see both the formation of the ripple domains, although thicker than before, but we also see those structures that are compatible with vertical bilayers of OPA in height, but have, they exhibit some kind of symmetry, uh, hexagonal symmetry, which we don't observe for other phyllosilicates such as mica. So this one is still undergoing for uh, we understand better what's happening here. And our conclusions are that with the appropriate choice of molecular geometry, which is linear length, which is long and head group, 
which is highly polar. Two D crystals are spontaneously formed on graphene, hexagonal boron nitride, and MOS2 surfaces. The natural corrugation of these crystals can be used to reveal substrate orientation under standard AFM conditions. The 2D crystals induce a well-defined p-type doping of graphene, only graphene. Uh, for tau, copier self-assemble is more complicated. We are still investigating that, that system. And I would like to thank professors Leonardo Campos and Marco Cimenta for helpful discussion and the funding agencies that made this work possible. And also thank you all, and I'll be happy to answer any questions in the chat room afterwards. Thank you.